name is Sho Shimoyamada. I'm a project lecturer at the University of Tokyo. Congratulations on the inauguration of the new global network. I hope the network will be surviving as a forum where everyone can exchange knowledge. As this slide shows, uh, my senior colleagues, Toru Fujimoto, Akiko Nakazawa, and I used to be collaborating with Dr. Nicola Galloway. Uh, she was a lecturer at the University of Edinburgh at the time, and we were creating a MOOC, Massive Open Online Course on English Medium Instruction and Global Englishes. In this short presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we collaborated on this MOOC development project. But before doing that, let me thank Dr. Nicola Galloway and Ms. Nadia Lamprecht for giving me an opportunity to introduce this collaboration. Thank you. So once again, my name is Sho Shimoyamada. Nice to meet you. Uh, I see myself as a researcher of leisure and tourism studies. I've been researching the garden and its potential as a tourism resource. But what I do as my job in my daily life is mostly global education broadly defined. Um, let me explain how I was stepping into this field. So I obtained my PhD from University of Edinburgh, Scotland, uh, and I decided to come back to Japan where I grew up for a personal reason. But when I came back to Japan, I had no publication. I had almost no connection with Japanese people in Japanese academia. And I was like hopeless at uh, getting a job although I was desperate for a job. Uh, but I was kind of confident in English, and I also had a few experiences teaching content courses in English back in the UK. Then I found that the University of Tokyo uh, was looking for somebody like me who could run a global faculty development. And I was like, uh, this is for me, and I applied for that, and I luckily got that job. Um, I was appointed as project researcher at the Global Faculty De Development Project, Center for Research and Development of Higher Education, University of Tokyo, and I spent almost three years developing a MOOC as part of this Global Faculty Development Project. In 2020, I left the team, I left the MOOC development project, then I became project assistant professor at the different department of the same university. Then I uh, got appointed as project lecturer in 2023. So I don't think I need to teach those points to experts who are attending this conference, but let me touch on a couple of points. Um, so the number of English medium courses has been increasing at higher education institutions across the globe in many countries and Japan is definitely one of them. Nevertheless, we don't have many learning materials and guidelines for teachers who are teaching or will be teaching EMI courses. Um, so we wanted to approach the mass. We wanted to create something everyone could use. That's why we thought MOOC is an ideal pedagogy. What do EMI teachers need to learn about? I think there are two things. One is English medium instruction. Another thing is the plurality of English, because in highly internationalized context, there might be people from different linguistic backgrounds who may speak different kinds of Englishes. So global Englishes needed to be combined with uh, English medium instruction. So um, this is how we came up with the idea of uh, developing a MOOC in collaboration with different experts. Um, collaboration was necessary because um, linguistic experts like you may know a lot about EMI and GE, but content teachers don't. So um, and developing a MOOC, of course, requires knowledge and skills of educational technology, and that's why uh, we needed to collaborate uh, with people with different expertise. Okay. The MOOC we developed is called New Tokyo English Academia, and it's divided into four subcourses. Uh, the first one is called 
English Academia One, EA One, and we launched it in 2017. And that was designed for novice English learners to learn the basics of academic English. And that was followed by its successor, EA Two. We launched in 2018, and it was designed for uh, intermediate English learners. Um, from around mid 2018, we started collaborating with Nicola. I contacted her for the first time in probably May or June 2018. Um, so the University of Tokyo team wanted to create a more advanced MOOC, a MOOC on EMI, but none of us was an expert in that field. So we needed an expert. And as you must know, Nicola is an expert of EMI and GE research. And Nicola kindly agreed to help us. So she joined the team as an external member. And we managed to uh, launch a MOOC on EMI, EA3, in 2019. And it was followed by EA4. Uh, it was a MOOC on GE and EMI. And we launched it in 2020. Unfortunately, the MOOC terminated in 2021 because our project was over in that year and our budget finished in that year. But the content of the MOOC has been archived at the link shown here. So please click on the link and go to our website. In the remaining part of this presentation, I will focus on EA3 and EA4 because this is what we collaborated on. This is what Nicola and the University of Tokyo team collaborated on. So this is the top page of the MOOC. Um, if you scroll down, you get four square images representing each subcourses. Um, I'm going to show you a bit about EA4 as an example. Each course has an introductory movie, and as you can see, we put a lot of cartoonish images to motivate learners. Here's the structure of the MOOC, starting with Lecture 1, Introduction, followed by Lecture 2, The History of the English Language. Lecture 5 introduces a global English perspective, and Lecture 7 discusses what English in EMI. This is where EMI meets GE. Um, let's take a look at lecture two as an example. So each lecture starts with a bit of reading material and also introduces a couple of technical terms because learners are not experts of EMI or GE. Then learners proceed to watch a lecture video. Let me show you a bit of that. Okay, so as you can see, we have Nicola at right hand side, bottom. It's not bottom, but at, on the right hand side. Um, we wanted to show Nicola as much as possible because we wanted to uh, maintain Lana's attention span. We also used a lot of cartoonish images, again, to motivate Lana's. Um, I'm afraid I don't have enough time to go over every bit and bit piece, but please um, go to our website by yourself and watch the rest of the lectures. After each lecture, we had a comprehension check quizzes and learners were encouraged to answer each quiz. And on the next page, they got uh, correct answers and references cited in the lectures. Okay, this is how I conceptualize what we did, our collaboration. We have University of Tokyo team on the left hand side and University of Edinburgh team on the right hand side and me somewhere in between. I think I was like an intermediary between Tokyo team and Edinburgh team. Um, Utokyo team, Toru Fujimoto and Akiko Nakazawa specialized in education technology. Um, Nicole Galloway, as you must know, she knows a lot about EMI and GE, and she was an English teacher in the past. Um, I was also like a content teacher because I didn't know much about educational technology and applied linguistics. 
So, but I speak English as a second language and I was teaching content courses in English in the UK, back in the UK. So, um, Akiko taught me a lot about uh, the basics of education technology, including instructional design, and that helped me a lot to structure this course. Um, I also studied basics of EMI and GE. That helped me a lot to come up with the content of EA3 and 4. I wrote up manuscripts for EA3 and 4, and I gave them to Nicola for review, and she got them back to me with a lot of critical comments that helped me. That was really helpful. Um, she was also preparing slides for her own lecture, and lecture was filmed at the University of Edinburgh. Um, Toru was leading the filming part because he had experiences making MOOCs uh, previously. So that's how we collaborated on the MOOC development. We also had external reviewers, Dr. Annette Bradford, Dr. Samantha Carl, Professor Ernesto Macaro, Dr. Jim McKinley, Dr. Heath Rose. Um, they gave us a lot of constructive constructive criticism, including uh, these four points, like somebody said, there should be more EMI courses than presented. You should double check with the latest figure. Um, you should make sure the figure presented are up to date. Um, somebody else was not very happy with comprehension, comprehension check quizzes that I made, saying learning isn't memorizing knowledge. Get your knowledge think, get your get them think about EMI and GE. Also, somebody said you should acknowledge other researchers as owners of those ideas that I borrowed. Um, also, somebody said, uh, get everything proofread. Um, my English wasn't perfect. Well, still isn't, but um, there are many grammatical errors in manuscripts and they corrected them. Last but not least, I would like to explain a wee bit about sustainability related issues. Developing a high quality MOOC is demanding. Um, we put a lot of resources in that. We needed to communicate with each other every day, um, every week. Um, I spent hours and hours brushing up the content of this MOOC. And that was a very challenging, tough project. There are also many aspects that we couldn't do by ourselves, so we outsourced uh, many aspects of this collaboration. For example, programming. There's a group of people, programmers, who created uh, this MOOC on our behalf. Um, we also rented a studio. There's a studio at the University of Tokyo, but we needed to pay a certain amount of money to a different department of the same university. Shooting and editing lectures there was a filming crew who were filming and editing Nicolas' lectures. And also, um, we asked somebody, an art creator, to design characters and cartoonish images um, that we put in the lectures and other parts of the MOOC. Proofreading, like I said, my English is, mm. <laughs> uh, I need to get everything proofread. So we used a lot. Uh, we used proofreading services very often. Making brochures. Um, in order to promote this MOOC, we needed to uh, create brochures, pamphlets, posters. Um, we asked somebody uh, to get those jobs done. And those points lead to the most difficult challenge we faced, which is difficulty keeping the content up to date. You know, Basically, making revisions to the MOOC is to do this process again, to repeat this process again and ask people again, pay certain amount of money to those people again. Um, I don't think we can't do that. Okay. So thank you very much for listening to my talk. I don't think I could explain about the MOOC development in detail, but I hope you benefited from my talk in some ways. Nicola and the Universal Tokyo team are very proud of ourselves and we are very pleased 
to showcase our achievement. But like I said, the way we developed the MOOC wasn't really sustainable. This is my personal opinion, but this is also an honest reflection. And I hope it stimulates you to discuss MOOCs in this conference. Once again, thank you very much for listening to my talk. I hope you're gonna enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.